We are in the year of remakes, baby. Star Ocean Second Story R, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, and now Saga games? I've heard mixed opinions about the series, which made me wary. And if it wasn't for good old Square Enix sponsoring today's video, I might have never played a Saga game. More specifically, Romancing Saga 2, Revenge of the Seven. Available now on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Steam. This is my first ever Saga game. I first touched the demo, which I was surprisingly impressed by, and after playing roughly 20 hours, still going. Let's see how the demo reflects the game as a whole. After you like and subscribe. Thank you. So we end up with a story of the seven heroes who vanquished fiends of old. They promised to return, but as time went on, people forgot that legend. However, when the veil of peace did lift, folks remembered real quick about the seven heroes. And they did return, but not as promised. They are now fiends. I love this quick explanation, building the mystery of what could have possibly happened to these revered legends. We are Gerard, the second prince of the Varan Empire, trying to learn the ways of combat under his father, Emperor Leon. However, trying to stave trouble from his homeland, he returns to find it was raided by fiends. Emperor Leon leads the charge to the fiend's door, but it doesn't go exactly as planned. Now Gerard must step up in his father's absence with newfound strength, while gathering allies to slay the seven disgraced heroes of old. I love it. Short, sweet, simple, to the point we get to dive right into the hero hunting. And you all want to know something shocking? I am a character-driven girly, and this is not the game for a rich cast, as they're mainly vessels for what skills they have and can possess. And let's put a pin in that. The narrative hooked me instantly. What has people wary is the unorthodox gameplay. On the surface, it appears normal. Attack, block, spells, use an item. Allies can equip up to two weapons, switching between them with ease to uncover and attack enemy weaknesses or resistances. You hit enemy, enemy hits you, you gain experience to level up, and aha, that's where it gets ya. Kiss the traditional leveling up system goodbye. How Saga works is what you use is what you level up. You use spears, spears level up. You use fire, fire levels up. Once technique points or TP reach a certain threshold, the character's weapon or spell school will increase. So it's important to use a wide variety, and sometimes you may want to play with your food a little instead of finishing it quickly. The more jabs, the more TP you get. But wait, there's more. There's nothing more exciting than glimmering or acquiring a new move. Certain abilities will have a light bulb icon next to their names, which indicate you have a chance of glimmering a new ability from it. Again, encouraging variety in skill uses. So pay attention to those skill trees and you can uncover all the moves locked behind weapons and magics. And don't sleep on glimmering evasion tactics either. Sometimes your characters will learn how to dodge specific moves. You're likely to glimmer new abilities from tougher enemies, like the game's many bosses. And there's even more. New to Romancing Saga 2 Remake are United Attacks. Link two or more attacks together to dish devastating damage at no MP cost. United attack combinations change depending on the order of battle, so align yourself wisely. Fill up the overdrive gauge by attacking enemy weaknesses. Another few things to mind in battle is the turn order, which helps you decide who you should go after to minimize damage to yourself. And formations. Different formations grant different boons. People in the front get targeted more while people in the back get targeted less and their speed is lowered. Certain enemies have AoE attacks that hit rows or columns, so it's important to know thy enemy and plan accordingly. But formations can be broken if the enemy strikes you first, and let me tell you, the last thing you want is your mage front and center. Alternatively, you can preemptively strike enemies, dealing some extra damage, their movement speed is reduced, and your overdrive gauge fills a little. Should enemies get the jump on you first, they are merciless and will kill you. Now, let me assure you, dying is a part of the saga experience. Every character has X amount of life points, or LP. The number goes down each time a character's HP reaches zero. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to get them back up. Any HP restorative will do. But some enemies like to kick an ally while they're weak, and should they die again, they'll continue to lose more LP. If their LP reaches zero, they are dead. Like, dead dead. The end of the line. To make matters even more dire, there's little to no way to restore LP. So be mindful. Be demure. Lastly, Ley Lines. Ley Lines can be your best friend or worst enemy. Ley Lines are prescribed an element based on your location. If you or enemies use an elemental magic that are the same as the Ley Lines, that magic is strengthened. Water Ley Line, water magic heals more or does more damage. If you continue to use the same magic of that Ley Line, the effect of that Ley Line only gets stronger. If you want to dispel it, you must use magic opposite of the Ley Line. I said before, these are your worst enemies because monsters you run into usually align with that element. That about wraps up the combat 
the game is pretty fair, by far the hardest part of the game is the demo segment, solely because it is littered with doppelgangers. And I said before, I'm 20 hours in and I haven't encountered one since. The bosses are just the right amount of challenge. Obviously, a lot of it depends on your setup, but enemies have multiple weaknesses. As long as you have variety in your lineup, there ain't nothing you can't overcome. Exploration within dungeons is fine. I like the dungeons are super straightforward, but add just enough to keep your brain engaged. There are a few things to keep a lookout for, like this strange creature known as Mr. S. He can be found in dungeons and towns doing Mr. S things. Each time, he'll give you a stamp and for every five, you unlock a new perk, like knowing how many chests are left in an area. Also, look out for memory fragments of the seven heroes and learning what drove them to turn into fiends. These were fun, fully voice acted, and being able to slowly piece together their fate. While fiend hunting, make sure to expand the empire of Varen. You do such a thing with quests. Help out the townsfolk of neighboring nations, and they'll swear themselves to your cause. This will allow you to unlock various facilities in the city of Avalon, like the smithy or a magical laboratory. Both help you craft gears or learn magics and how to combine them. Now the choices you make in Saga matter. Some choices will lead you to earning a new ally or bar you off from one. I also love that you can go wherever the wind takes you. I've only hacked off two fiends and one of them I only found because I blew off the main objective. Sure, I could stop these dastardly fiends, or shall I have a dance with the mysterious maiden? In case it wasn't obvious, I chose the maiden. And while it's all well and good to help the good people of the realm, be aware that time passes. The current emperor will retire, and you will have to choose a new retinue. This will also happen if the party is wiped. And let's come back to that pin when I said characters are vessels for skills. When you choose your new retinue, there is little attachment, outside of the starting man Gerard, who I wish I could have played for the remainder of the game. All the other emperors are just husks who inherit the powers before them. Your retinue has similar energy. Oh, this character is good at these magics. Oh, this one's good with their fists. There is no worth to these shells other than the skills they have. It's not even oh, this is so-and-so's daughter or son. Nope, just color palette swaps of previous characters and a name change. And honestly, I couldn't tell you the names of any of my party members. I remember Gerard, Leon, and that's it, because they were actual characters. Even the voice acting ends with Gerard. When you take quests, the quest giver talks and you're left with options as they continue talking at you. That was a little sad, but not a deal breaker. So, when this was first announced, people were cheering at how great it looks. And I mean, seeing where it started to where it is now, I'm happy with the glow up. I played on PlayStation 5 and everyone looked great. I love, love, love the fiend designs. The enemies in general, honestly, look really intimidating. I play a lot of RPGs and these guys gave me some pause. I was like, y'all looking mighty freaky. Aside from that, yeah, it does have a bit of the puppeteer look about the animations, especially when talking, but something I've grown accustomed to, I suppose. And the music, it's very strange to say, but it's part of the course. It sounds as simple as the plot to this game, and yet, I like it. It's like the quintessential medieval JRPG sounding soundtrack. I don't hate it. Actually, I kind of appreciate the simplicity. It's not what I would listen to by itself, but within the game, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, th this is nice. Also, for you nostalgic nuts out there, yes, you absolutely could switch between classic and remade tracks at any time. And you know what? I love the classic OST. You can't go wrong either way, but as someone who has no nostalgia for this game, I felt nostalgia for the music. I'm torn between the battle theme, which I am just strapped in. I actually prefer the classic version. This theme lives in my head rent free. But also, I really enjoyed the serene theme of Mu Tundra. You know what it is, right? There's actually no such thing as a bad ice slash snow area theme. In this one, I prefer the newer version. Romancing Saga 2, Revenge of the Seven. Highly recommend it. One of the few games where the failings of underdeveloped characters does not hinder the fun. And to be fair, this game is where the villains shine, and you know I'm a villain lover. Rest easy knowing you don't need any prior knowledge of Saga to jump in. 
I sure didn't, and I'm having a blast. Remember, there is a demo out now on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Steam, and it does carry over to the main game. Be sure to click on the Gleam link in the description to check out Square's giveaway for the game. Use code 7 for a chance to win some awesome prizes. Mwah!